coming up. <laughs> go ahead, Sammy, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start in one minute. So if you want to start wrapping up your conversations, start taking a seat, we're going to kick off in, a, in about a minute. Okay, good morning everyone, and how awesome it is to hear the chatter and the conversations and people moving and the coffee shop flowing, hey? It's good that we are coming back more and more each week, and uh, we're getting back to some kind of normal, so praise the Lord, and let's just thank Him for what He's doing in our lives, what He's doing in our church, and uh, yeah, how awesome it is to be back together, just being here is a testimony of His goodness. Amen? So I hope you guys are feeling comfortable, you're feeling welcome. We have an amazing day ahead of us, uh, an awesome service. We're going to praise the Lord, and we're going to just see what He has for us and what we can give to Him. So as we start, let's just stand. We're just going to worship the Lord. And let's just pray. Father, we just thank You so much for Your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here, and we know that you're here, and we know that you're willing. And so I just pray, and I just sense the Lord is just wanting to break off this morning the sense of guilt and shame and a feeling of not worthy. That you, that the Lord is always willing. He is more willing to move in you today and to speak and to fill you than you are. He's doing, he wants to do a better work and a bigger work in you than you would ever imagine and dream for yourself. And so we just pray, Holy Spirit, will you just break any lie and any fear right now? And we'll, like, we'll be able to come freely and boldly in your presence this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, it's my privilege to be here with you this morning, and uh, I just wanted to start off by sharing something that I felt um, God speak to me about yesterday. Um, I think if you've been here before, then you, you've probably become familiar with what the worship sets are like here, and when I chose my songs this week, I just kept thinking to myself, why, did, why are these songs? Like, why did I choose these? These are not songs that I would no normally have chosen, but I really felt like these were the songs for this week. And I kept thinking about them, and I thought, sure, you know, a lot of these songs are songs that either were released or that I used to sing when I first got saved. And I just felt the Lord say, that's why it's these songs. And I was reminded of a scripture um, in Isaiah where David says, restore to me the joy of my salvation. 
And I just felt like this morning, there are some people here where maybe the joy of your salvation has been lost. Maybe, maybe it hasn't even been a conscious thing for you. Maybe it's because of hurt that you've experienced. Or maybe it's just been so long in your journey with the Lord that it's just normal and it's not necessarily joyful. But I felt this morning that God wants to restore the joy of his salvation to some of us in this room. So even just as I pray for us now, just think about, is this word for me? Is this word for me? Can I trust God for that this morning, the joy of, of his salvation? And so, again, because it's songs I don't usually choose, maybe some of them will be unfamiliar. But I just want to encourage you this morning, just trust God for what he's doing in hearts this morning. If you don't necessarily feel like it's something specifically that he's doing for you, then be trusting him for what he's doing in the hearts of others this morning. Because I believe it's such an important thing that we take joy in our salvation and take joy daily in what Jesus has done for us. So we just invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and minister to our hearts, God. Come and meet us where we're at. We want to be able to celebrate daily, Jesus, what you did for us at the cross when you opened the way to the Father. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus, I love you, and I love you. Your name is my God on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Jesus, I
So while we worship, we're going to continue worshiping, but we're going to take up the offerings now. So, and we're going to give that to our mercy needs, the people that are in need in our church. And so if, if you have an offering, the basket's up front because of all our protocols. So you can just make your way up and you can pop it in the basket in the front and take back your seats and then we will and we'll keep on worshiping in that way. Amen. For those that are online, the banking details are on the website, and so you can gather there. Yes, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. And you ask us to become living sacrifices. We lay down our lives to you now, and we offer up everything to you. We just love you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing here. Will you come and will you imprint? Will you fill? Will you flood our hearts in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, we could go on forever. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you, team. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, guys. There's a lot to do today, so we're just trying to uh, fit it all in. First of all, welcome to our new guests, anyone who's a first-time visitor with us. I hope you're feeling welcome. You've been feeling cared for. Someone has greeted you and given you a Connect card. If you can fill that out, put your details and give it to the coffee shop at the back, you get yourself a free cappuccino. Um, so that's always awesome. And so enjoy that with us. Also, if it's the first time you guys are back, the coffee shop is open. So grab your espressos and your hot tea chocolates and your mochas and all that stuff, eh? Amen. Uh, just for the kids as well, is a notice that the kids are upstairs at the moment, if they've signed in. And at the end of the service, they'll come and they'll make their way to the lounge just behind here where the couches are. 
that's where you can come and pick up your child uh, straight after the service. And if your child wants to play, and if there's a little bit, if they're a bit unsettled and you need a space, the kids zone, if you go to where the bathrooms are, but right at the end, there's a room there, there's a live stream TV so you can see everything that's going on, and there's games and there's things going on there so you can feel comfortable, they can continue playing, and you can be part of the service. So feel free to use that facility. Okay, we're going to get into some notices quickly before we welcome some new members. First of all, the Burning Bush series. So what we're going to be doing here over the next four weeks is we're going to host our Burning Bush uh, series, which is consisting of Vineyard Sages. So Derek Morphew, Costa Mitchell, John Fisher, Alexander Fenton, they've prepared live-streamed messages on this theme of calling. Are we called and how do we continue and, and finish well? And so that's going to be over the next four weeks in the building. We're going to be watching here, but it's going to be live stream. So at your house churches, we're encouraging you to meet as a house church. Either join us here, watch it with us. Dave's going to share a quick word as well, and we're going to look at a few things. The coffee shop will be open, so you're more than welcome to come here. Uh, but you can meet in your house churches, gather at home, and watch the live stream with us. So that's over the next four weeks, starting from this Wednesday, the 17th of March at 7 p.m. to 8.30, and it's going to be on Facebook Live, and so the link will be sent out each week. You can just click on the link, or you can go on Facebook, and you can watch uh, with us four weeks, all the way until the first Wednesday of April. Youth is back on. It's been going on for another two or three weeks now. It starts at 7 p.m. The guys are doing some amazing things. It's filling up. There's just a real buzz going on in our youth. So if you've got a young, young guy, young girl who's age 13 to up to 18, speak to Josh. He's at the back there holding some flyers. He's, a, he's in charge of that. Or speak to some of the leaders that are around here and get them there. Friday, 7 p.m. Another one here is our Easter weekend. And so obviously we found out last week we can't go camping because of this COVID rubbish. But we cannot, that's not going to stop us. We're going to do our Festival of Hope, which we did two years ago. And you should have received one on your, on your chair. If you haven't received one, can you just put up your hand? Just so we make sure everyone's got one of these. Anyone who didn't receive one? Josh is going to run around if there is. There's one back. Okay, and you'll see on the back, there's the, the program. I'm not going to run through the whole program, but you can look and identify different things that you are excited to do. And sign up if you have to sign up for that, or just join us. And please, especially the volleyball and the sports, like the cricket and stuff, um, if you are interested, please speak to someone. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to find everyone who's interested, and we don't want to kind of feel like we're chasing down people. So if you're keen, please get involved, get part of it. You're not too old, and you're not too young to be involved in those things. Okay, we want to make sure that everyone gets a chance and is, everyone is, is active in being part of this. So there's the, the program. It's full there's a lot to do on Friday, there's a lot to do on Saturday, and there's great stuff that's happening on Sunday, especially that cricket match as an under, tw under, under 30. I'm, I've made it about six months before my over 30, so I'm very, very chuffed. Um, okay, so you can get in charge of that. You can start putting your penciling down those dates, and you can please get involved as, as much as you can in that. It's going to be an awesome time. And finally, our East Wing. You'll notice outside... That thing is rocketing up every single week. As we come back here, we're seeing more and more happening, and we're excited to open the place and see what the Lord wants to do in our new healing center. Karen had about 60 new counselors trained up yesterday, so they're all wanting to get to level two and level three and grow. So we've got some people who are getting trained and who are going to help and assist in healing. Um, but we still need a lot of finances, as we can see here, to make sure that we can pay it as quick as possible and get it up and running. Um, and so we're asking for any access bonds that anyone can loan us. We will pay with interest um, and so that we can get those funds into the builders and we can get this thing up and running. So if, if you've got one of those, please speak to Gav. He's got his maroon shirt on the back of the sound desk. Chat to him. We're still looking for a few uh, loanees, and we would really, really appreciate that. Okay, and um, I think we're going to welcome Dave. Ask Dave to come up, and he's going to share a few community notices.
Yes. Uh, this battery is dead, yes. How are you all doing? <laughs> hey, everybody all right? Nice to see you all again. It's uh, good to be together. And uh, Josh just totally reminded me, Bernice just finished her, her honours. Uh, and she, in fact, uh, she did so well, she, she graduated with cum laude in her industrial, industrial psychology. So give Bernice a hand. Eh? And uh, so we're very excited to celebrate that. I also have Caleb here as well. Caleb's uh, our third son and uh, leads the Vineyard Church in Signaling, Woodstock, uh, Cape Town. Good to have you with us today, Cal. Yeah. And Caleb's uh, taken a call to the Bristol Vineyard in the UK, so they're getting ready to make that move and just pray for them because we need to find a suitable uh, God-appointed replacement to lead the Signal Vineyard in Cape Town as well. Well, we are excited today to... And didn't you love that worship this morning, huh? I just sorry we love what you bring. Eh? It's such a gift to us. We're so grateful for that. Eh? So hang on, let me switch this mic. Okay, go on, so we go. Okay, if you like Michael Jackson, suddenly here we go. <laughs> Try the moves. Eh? <laughs> Not quite like that. Eh? Anyway, all right? Take my mask off. Sorry, man. Everything comes off with it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> here we go. It's a privilege, a blessing to take the mask off, isn't it? I'm sure you all wish you could. Is this thing right? Eh? I feel like it's, there we go. Okay. Sure. It's, uh, we're looking forward to the day when we can really be together, everybody. Eh? And uh, those at home, I know we've been talking to a few that are at home. Welcome to you as well. Eh? And uh, we trust in God that they'll, they'll give us the next level of 50% floor space, at least. At least, so we can have... Um, three times what we've got here at the moment. Uh, but Easter's going to be great. We're going to use as much of the capacity as we can. Um, I want Gavin to come up here and, and help me now because we, uh, we've been, uh, during, even during lockdown, still trying to facilitate hospitality and uh, helping people find their way into the life of the church. Fountain is not a, just a club or a crowd or something. It's a, it's a body of people that are, that's a community of friends. Um, and we recognize that God has called us together. And friends... Uh, lay their lives down for one another. Friends uh, go out of their way to, to serve. They, they don't ask the question, what's in it for me? They ask, how can I serve you? And, and, and it's that mindset that uh, guides us as we think about membership in this church. Uh, and we do have different levels. We have visitors uh, who come and go, and we bless them for being here. Uh, there are friends in the church that uh, come more often than not. And then there's family, a family connection. Those who say, look, I want to be considered a regular uh, and a participant, and, um, and how, how can I do that well? We've got a series of exercises, they're not laws, they're exercises that we encourage, and they run on the acrostic that's reminding us in the banners in the uh, lounge area. That is a lounge, by the way, so you won't realize that the chair's been tied up for about a year already, but it is a lounge, and it starts with the G for it's Go Faith is the acrostic. Um, G is for discovering your gifts. O is for outreach. We want every person who participates in Fountain to be sure that you uh, have connections and friendships with people that are not in the Lord and in the church. That we, this is, it's not Fountain Vineyard Monastery. Eh? We don't want to escape the world. We want to engage. We want to be light and salt. So O is for outreach. F is for father intimacy. We, each one of us is, is encouraged to seek the Lord, to know Him, to hear His voice on a regular basis. A is for attendance. To show up, whether it's a cell group or a ministry team that's going on, or worship opportunity. Uh, I is for integrity, uh, and that's to be the, the willingness to be known, to be disclosing, to live transparently. Um, and the T is for our tithes and offerings and the whole financial stewardship thing. We, we commit to live in a particular way. We, we commit to live loving the Lord and, and not being bound to mammon and all that goes with mammon. Eh? And, of course, H is for heal, uh, healing. We're all committed to ongoingly um, grow up before we grow old and become whole in the places where we've been broken and, and uh, damaged. Um, so increasingly, uh, we, we should be able to say to each other, watch this space. Something's happening for me, huh? How many of you feel like you've grown in the last year? Huh? And those who haven't got their hands up, we'll have a special ministry time for you just now. We... Uh, we hope that you will move an inch forward by the end of today. So Gavin's going to call up some names of people who attended our recent Connect. Thanks, Gav. And uh, get them up here. And we want to do some praying over them and introductions. Thanks, Gav. Fantastic. 
Morning, everyone. So I'll just call names up. If you can please um, social distance as you come up the front, it'll be, be great. So Benny and Dina and Josh, the Beckers, uh, David Hobson, Deborah Brown, Doreen Chatiza, and I'm not sure if Sean's there as well, uh, Yanni, Bianca, and Tian, Lorenzo and Madeleine, Lou Junk, Nicholas Esterhazen, and last but not least, all the way from Zombo in Malawi, Whiskey Jim. Whiskey. Would you guys mind coming a bit this way? Yeah, just spread out across here. Make a, a COVID line. How's it, Benny? Good to see you, man. Hey, little David. <laughs> okay, so we, we've asked them if they would just give a one-sentence description, of, obviously introduce themselves, and then just say why they are joining. So I'll just hold the mic. It's easier for, for COVID reasons. So. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Whiskey Jim from Malawi, Zomba. Yeah, this other day I met uh, Victor. I think you all, most of you, you know Victor. So he just invited me to come to this church on that day. And when I came here, I felt so good. And I, it was like, I'm home. And I felt that this is the nice place to be. Yeah, so I can say I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I can say something. Thanks, Whiskey. Uh, for me, I just feel sometimes God uh, repositions you, and you just have to be obedient to the season he leads you in. So I believe the next season, this is our home, and looking forward to it, and really feel like home. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Benny, Becker, Josh, and my wife, Dini. Yeah, it's an honor and a privilege just to, to, to be here, and thank you for, for the opportunity, and we are very excited to, to get tuck, tucked into, into stuff here and uh, to go faith. Mm. Mm. Good. <laughs> um, many of you know me as, as Dave. Um, been, been here for just over a year, actually. Uh, if there was an opportunity for this uh, sooner, um, would have definitely joined us. It's been amazing. It's been amazing the sense of family and home that there is here and, and the, the culture of grace that has been cultivated here what, and what that's done in me and the healing that I found here and the growth. It's, it's been incredible. So it's a bit of a no-brainer for me. Um, I'm uh, privileged to call this home. Thanks, so. Dave. You can pray. You can pray. Yeah, that's Marcus idea. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess Blake is the Yovah Tainy. I'm just going to be on call and take it. Yeah, we go. Lovely. Um, yeah, I think the Lord actually, in, in the words, says a lot to us uh, about family. And we're here to inspire and encourage and challenge each other and love each other. And I just want to thank everybody for, for welcoming us and making us feel part of, of Fountain. Thanks very much. Mm. Yo, this is Bianca Yanni Pion. Hi, I'm Lorenzo from Furen, Madeleine, my wife. Uh, my son Tian and the Gabby's son Liam is good friends. And uh, about a year ago, he said to us, Dad, come and visit once. And uh, when we walked into the front door, it felt like home. You know, you walk into a place where you go and braai, sometimes you feel like home, if you feel uh, at home there, or it feels like home. Uh, and this is home for us now. Thank mm. you. Thanks, sir. Morning, everybody. My name is Lou. I um, moved to this area a couple of years ago, and I've been coming here for a while. And when I read that little booklet where I was invited, and it said that um, this church is founded on on the principles of Christ, that was good enough for me. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Doreen. I'm from Zimbabwe, but I'm staying there in Roma. Uh, my son invited me to come to church because his friend is in this church. So for the first time when I come, I feel this is a family and I feel that I must be part of this family. And I'm happy to be here. 
to work as a, a family of God together. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Deborah. I've been affiliated to um, Vineyard since 2018 with Tamara and Stephen Duplessis and family. And I've moved to the area, so I've decided to um, make this home. Mm. Mm. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been coming here for a while. My name is Nick. Um, and yeah, Vineyard has just been. Uh, family and a place to grow mm. and I'm just happy to be joining formally. Mm. Thanks Nick. <laughs> Thanks very much guys. It, uh, we're going to pray for the moment but oh, isn't it fascinating how it's like a love relationship. Uh, sometimes you, it's love at first sight and by the next week you know this is where you've got to be. For others it's a it's a protracted engagement. Eh? I was thinking about how many of you expose your age a moment. Remember the, the radio program called Taxi with Chuck and Moitel? How many remember that? They were engaged for like 45 years or something. You know? Anyway, it's amazing how God works us into a, a, a relationship with each other that, that was authentic. And that's what we want to welcome you guys into, an authentic sense of connection in the Lord. And just to say, it's, one thing is guaranteed, I should say too, Jesus will never stop loving you. That's number one. Uh, and we hope to carry that same heart towards you. But the other is we're very sure to offend you somewhere along the line. We're very good at causing offense. And uh, somehow God, we've seen over the years that God uses our offenses to grow us. So welcome to the place of offense and growth. Amen. So before you go, before you go, hey, we, we, we're not allowed to uh, actually touch them, but we can stand a little closer than we are. If you uh, want to just express your support for these people. Maybe you walk in a fellowship with them in a cell group or something like that. You'd like to come and stand near them, reach out your hands towards them. Why don't we just do that? Maybe you can just stretch the line a little bit further. Stretch out a little bit further. Let's have people come and just express our, our sense of being body together <clears throat> um, and make sure there's everyone is drawn into the family of God called Fountain Vineyard. <clears throat> And then we're going to pray for them. So let's just have people surrounding all of them. There we go. Just reach out towards them, hey? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless you for these people and for the journey they're on, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in their lives, uh, what you're doing in our lives, Lord. And uh, thank you for the privilege of following you together. And so we pray, Lord, each of us, we just reach out our hands towards these brothers and sisters now, and we say, Lord, help us to love them, and help them to love us, help us to be that which you want us to be, an expression of your body. Grow us in these things, Lord. Grow us in the places where you know each of us needs to be grown. And we pray, Lord, that they would be good for us and us for them, that we would see more of your kingdom come because of the way you're enriching our life together. So we receive them and we commit ourselves to them even as they commit to us. We commit ourselves to them that what we have is theirs. And we have all things in common in Jesus. So thank you for the privilege of doing life in the community of the King. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Eh? Just give them a fist pump or something or whatever you're allowed to do. All right. We would normally hug on them and do all of that stuff. Where is... Uh, All right, so as for our message and the word today, I ask Catherine Mayer to come and share with us again. Uh, just for those who don't know, Catherine is a friend of ours, been friends for a long, long time. And uh, nice to have you with us too, Glenn, Catherine's husband. Um, and we've been privileged to see the grace of God working in Catherine's life over the years. Uh, so significantly that I don't know how long ago, but some time ago she even changed her name. How many? Two years ago, she actually had a, a name change to Catherine, which is a, a significant statement that's been made here, and it's, it's, a, it's a statement that she's a trophy of grace, and I just feel like God is on her, and he wants us to receive what, what he's bringing into our lives through her, so we're opening that space for her to just unload it and bring it, and um, ask you to just open your heart to receive that. So why don't we just do it? Let's um, just open our hands to the Lord and invite your Holy Spirit to come. 
Prepare us to receive what you want to impart to us today, Lord. And we pray for Catherine to have a sense of presence, a presence to, to hear your spirit and to bring life to your people. May what you said, Jesus, be true of her. The words you speak, may they be spirit and life. May spirit and life flow amongst us today as, as hope is ignited, as healings happen, as your word goes forth in power and in direction. So we, we receive all that you want to impart to us and help us to hear, hear well and mix it with faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thanks, Dave. This is on. Yeah. Sarah, would you mind just coming up, please? Um, I'm going to do it a little bit different this morning, but um, while we were worshiping, I just experienced the glory walk in this room. And as I was standing in the front, and I, I just sensed the angels come in. Yeah, I need you just to play. Um, and as I'm standing watching you guys, I'm just literally seeing angels coming in between all the seats. And the Lord said to me, he wants to bring healing today. He wants to take away loneliness and every area of fear that the masks and COVID has brought into this place. So today we're not alone, and that's why I feel sorrow needs to be up here. Because heaven is with us today. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, angels. Father, I pray that every word that comes from my mouth will be from you. I pray for a coal of fire in my mouth, Lord. I'm not here for me. I'm purely here for you, Jesus. Father, I pray that you will bring restoration today. That you will bring intimacy that you release brokenness over people today, Lord. I see you break, 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 break. Jesus, 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 we welcome you here today. Whew. Jesus. Sorry, I feel a little bit whacked by the Spirit. Today I'm going to be speaking about my subject title is Burning Hearts. And I want to start with a diary entry that the Spirit gave me while I was preparing. The Father says, my heart breaks for my people. They live lives that are empty, forever searching for something to fill them. They put expectation on others that can only be filled by me. The gaping hole in their souls is the place where my living water should flow. I created them to be with me. Living from a place of being soaked by my living waters, I have everything they need. But yet they run. They run to people, to things. They are stuck in addiction. Abuse is what they consider love to be. My heart breaks for my people as I watch them run away from me. Stop, turn and come to me. See how my heart burns with love for you, for I carry the keys to your belonging. In me you will have the overflow of intimacy, for my goodness and my mercy have no end. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm your best friend your shepherd and the lover of your soul. I will walk through the deepest darkness with you. I'm your resting place and my love will flow through you and bring you to a place of rest. And I believe that that's what God wants to do today. He wants to bring you to a place of shalom, a place of deep, deep, deep peace. That it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what's happening in your families your business he wants to bring restoration he asked me today to speak on love receiving the love from the father and then giving love out from that place that deep place of overflow today I speak to you from a place of brokenness myself as in preparation of this message God showed me the areas of my own life 
we are lacking love. We are needy when I expect things from people. It is hard when God asks us to face our own brokenness. But what he said to me is when you are willing, he will bring restoration and healing. And if there's any point in time where we need restoration, it is now. We can't go forward if we don't receive from him. If we're not planted with our feet in his living water, being overflowed with his goodness and his love, where his mercy becomes part of our daily I know for me, I grew up from a place of I have to serve to be loved. Or you have to be obedient to be loved. You have to do, do, do. But what God has taught me in this season is you just need to come and sit with me. I want to be with you. I'm interested in your heart. In the last few years, the Lord has really broken my heart for people. The lack and the need in people. where they have not learned to experience the essence of God, because the essence of God is love. In Matthew 22, verse 36, it says, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, or other translations, strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is love others as you love yourself. Now there's a problem. How can we love others if we don't know how to receive love from God? Or if we don't know how to love ourselves? I know that in times where I struggle to love who I am, I'm not giving out love. I'm giving out expectation. I get angry. But the Lord wants us to love because He is love. His very essence is love. And what I've seen is, it's not just people in the world who struggle to receive His love. It is us, his children, the ones that he paid for, that struggles to sit at his feet and receive love. Because if we have to be honest, most of us know how to do, but we don't know how to be. And we can't actually be effective if we don't know how to receive that flow of living waters, that flow, that flow, that flow. Even as I look around the room and I see these angels sitting, they want to flow, 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 restore you back, restore you back to what Jesus paid for. He came to restore us to his nature and his nature is love. The problem is that we are comfortable with Jesus at the cross. We are comfortable. He paid for us. We saved. So we are okay. But we don't push through to Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Because at his resurrection, we receive the overflow of his love. We receive miracles, signs, and wonders. We receive from him in that place. But a lot of people can't push through to that. Because it's safe to just stay at the cross. But today, God wants to restore your nature back to love. To that resurrection, that dunamis power to flow through you, to flow through your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul. He wants to flow through us today. He does not want anybody to leave here today broken and without love, without understanding the love of the Father. If you look at God, I've said it before, but His very essence is love. And we are His children. We are made by love, in love, and for love, by by a creator that is love. So if he is love, then we should look like children of love. 
whose hearts are burning with fire for our Creator and for people around us. The love I'm talking about is not Sunday, Wednesday, Wednesday and Sunday. It's not even a devotional. It is 24-7 communion with the King. It is focusing your attention on Him all the time, throughout the day. It is a state of being where you are so... living, living and breathing and loving from Him. Living from heaven, constant flow from heaven, constant intimacy from heaven. The word says God loves us unconditionally and everlasting, which means there's no condition and it lasts forever. He paid for us at the cross and based on that we know that we are accepted and we are loved by Him. We don't have to do anything. We have to learn to be Mary, sitting at His feet. This is not a female thing. He is asking male and female to sit at His feet, to drink deeply from His presence every day. Because that is where you get restored. That is where you feel an overflow, where you can give out to people. That is where you get your commissioning. That's where transformation happens. A lot of people say to me, won't you mentor me? And yes, there's a few that I really feel like God wants me to walk with. But my question is always, but you have Holy Spirit. He is the very best mentor. He is the very best healer. In Him we receive everything we need. Yes, we need people. And yes, all these things that we do is important. But man, it has to come from the Father. You have to know how to connect spirit to spirit and receive what you need from heaven. If you love from a place of intimacy, you love with healing that overflows. A lot of pain, will not even be there if we learn to really, truly love. Where people see Jesus in you, where they see the brokenness, the desperation, the need for Jesus, where they see the love that flows from you. But so often, we look at people for what they can fill in us, that gaping hole, that brokenness inside of us that very area that we were created to connect with the Spirit. We try and let people fill that place. I love Ephesians. It tells us in Ephesians 1 that He chose us. He chose us. He wanted to know us. He wanted intimacy with us and he wants us to live in him. He chose that. We are not a burden. We are not a problem. We look at ourselves as problems. I'm to this, I'm to that, I'm to that. Jesus doesn't even see those things. He broke me one day. When he showed me what he sees in me compared to what I see in myself. There's this dove advert that shows how you, this artist who who draws how you see yourself and then how your friend sees you. And that is very much how it is. We look at ourselves a certain way, but Jesus sees us in our resurrected state. He doesn't look at us as broken and useless. He looks at us with this joy, this joy that overflows. This is my child. This is mine. 
She belongs to me. He belongs to me. But we don't see ourselves that way. This morning, I saw Jesus walking through here. He was dancing. He is a God of joy. Joy, 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 joy. But we get stuck. We get stuck. Because we want to work for it. We want to see him as a taskmaster. But he is a God of joy. And today he wants to restore joy in this place. If you could do anything with him, what would you do? Would you work? Would you dance? What would you do? If it was my boys, they would be doing backflips. Because that's a boy thing. Maybe me, I would try my hand at ballet with the Lord. Oh, I have tried. I suck. But I do try. In my times alone with Him, I dance. Because that is who He is. He's created us for joy, for intimacy, for closeness, to know Him. John 17 verse 3 says, Now this is eternal life, that, may, that they may know you, the only true, supreme and sovereign God, and in the same manner know Jesus as the Christ whom you have sent. The word says that he wants us to know him, all of him, enjoy him, drink from him. Jesus came to restore our, back to, our nature back to love so that we can look like him because we are his children. We are his children, so our heart should burn for him. It should burn for people. 1 Timothy 1 verse 5 says, For we reach the goal of fulfilling all the commandments when we love each other deeply with a pure heart, a clean conscience, and a sincere faith. Now, when I read that scripture, to me, it speaks of having to live from a place of overflow, not expectation, not selfishness. What can they give to me? If I do this, what can they do for me? We have to get self out of the way. There's no selfishness in love and no love in selfishness. We need to decrease and Jesus in us need to increase and restore us. Day in and day out, restore us. When we live with a gaping hole in our soul, what he said, what she did, what he did, what she did, what I want, what I desire, what I need, we look like the world. We don't look like people who is plugged into the Spirit, who knows the overflow, the joy of His presence. But when He restores us and He fills us to overflow, we are able to love others freely, openly. Jesus, to me, is one of the best examples of love. Well, he's the best example of everything. But Jesus showed great compassion for people. We see him heal the sick, raise the dead, set the captives free, and give people their dignity back. He was an extraordinary listener. He listened to his disciples, to his enemies, and he took time to answer them. He showed great respect to everyone, women, children, lepers, the sick, the needy, the lost, the broken. Man, we can learn. I know when I read this out and Jesus starts cutting my heart because there's areas in my own heart where when I see someone on the street, I want to run the other way. And it's not that I don't have compassion. I've got so much compassion, but I struggle. I struggle with the lack in people. But Jesus went to those people. He went to fulfill them. 
He went to heal them, their brokenness. He was a great encourager. He encouraged people back to love, to receive the love of the Father, and to show people how to love. He was humble. He had a servant's heart. And in John 13, we see him wash his disciples' feet. What would it look like if we all have that kind of attitude towards people where we want to wash each other's feet and love each other? Not for what you can get, but from a place of, I just want to do it for you, bro. I just want to do it. I love you. You don't have to do anything back to me. But we live in a society of tit for tat, where if I do, you do. But what would it look like if we change that? In John 13, verse 34, I am giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. So you go and love each other. All the way through the scriptures, we see the commandment to love and to receive love from the Father. I want to look at the example of John. I love John. I love the book of John. John understood love. He understood love. He called himself the one that Jesus loved, the beloved of Jesus. He, we see in, I think, verse 34-ish. Am I right? 30, 23? Yeah, verse 23. We see him leaning his chest against Jesus, and he asks him a, a question. In those days, it was custom for, for friends, for close friends, to put their ear on each other's chest, to just be close. And this is the place where Jesus wants us to live from, close, where we can hear his heartbeat, where he can restore us, where he can speak to us, where we can hear what he's saying, where we can get commissioned for what he's calling us into. We receive breakthrough and healing, transformation, Right here, nestling. Not out there doing, yes, doing is important. But we first have to be here, close, close. This is my favorite times. No music, no, no anything. I just close my eyes and I breathe him in. Oh, Jesus. Oh, let's do that. Just close your eyes for me. Just breathe in deeply. Just breathe. Ask Holy Spirit where he is. If he's in the back of you, in the front of you, on the sides of you. Just nestle in. Just get nice and close to him. Just allow him to speak to you. This is all you have to do, <laughs> just to be close to him. Throughout the day, this is all you need. Whew.
just see a wave of his love flowing through this place. Just allow it. Just allow it. Father, cleanse our ears, cleanse our eyes, cleanse our hearts right now. Let us be able to receive from you, Jesus. Just allow him. Just allow him. for every area that keeps us away from your presence. Pride, insecurity, brokenness. We lay it at your feet right now, Lord. Just come, Lord. Just come. Just stay there with him. Just stay there. One of the character traits of the divine sonship is love. Being able to connect like this to the vine. Staying in this place. You can keep your eyes closed if you want. I'm just going to read some scriptures. 1 John 3 verse 11 to 14. The beautiful message you've heard right from the start is that we should walk in self-sacrificing love towards one another. Yet we can be assured that we have been translated from spiritual death into spiritual life because we love the family of believers. We are translated into Him. He breathes over us. And when we stay connected like this to the vine, we are able to love. 1 John 4, verse 7 to 12. Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another. Because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of him. The one who doesn't love has yet to know God. For God is love. The light of God's love shine within us when we sent his matchless son into the world so that what we might live through him. This is love. Sorry, guys, I'm so... He loved us long before we loved him. (laughs) It was his love, not ours. He proved it by sending his son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sin. Delightfully loved ones, if he loved us with such tremendous love, then loving one another should be our way of life. No one has ever gazed upon the fullness of God's splendor, but if we love one another, God makes his permanent home in us, and we make our permanent home in him, and his love is brought to its full expression in us. We have come into an intimate experience of God's love and we trust in the love he has for us because God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God and God lives through them. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God has demonstrated to us. Can you feel it? Can you feel the closeness of his touch? Can you feel his embrace? As children whose hearts are burning, burning with love for him, burning with love for him, we should burn for each other. We should live from a place, a culture of love, honor, and respect where we highly esteem each other, where we put great value on each other, where it doesn't matter the shortcomings, but we choose to love one another because he loves us and because we are connected to him, because the overflow, his presence hits us like waves, like waves of living waters, bringing healing, bringing restoration to us. And so we go out and we love others, even the most difficult ones. That is what he asks of us.
as his children, he wants us to bring heaven to earth. He wants us to bring the restoration of heaven. He created you and me higher than the angels. He gave us physical bodies to come and be his children to come and restore people back to intimacy back to his heart, back to his nature back to his love we see ourselves as worthless that we don't have purpose he sees us as burning fireballs that gets released on earth to restore people back to the nature of God to bring people into intimacy So let us live from that place. Let us restore people back to Him. There's an invitation today for us to walk with burning hearts. To see Jesus as the resurrected Christ. To look past the cross. To see Him as the burning one. I'm going to read a vision to you that I had last year as Jesus, the burning one. You can close your eyes. Just receive from him. A vision opened in front of me and I saw Jesus, the burning one. His eyes flashing like flames of fire. Power and victory radiated from him when I heard the words faithful and true over and over. His body looked like it was shining, and I had the impression that he was dripping with oil. As I walked closer to him, I felt overcome by joy and identity. I felt myself being filled with his resurrection love, and authority rushed through my being. Strengthened and full of purpose, I bowed before him in awe and wonder, crying out, King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. He's asking us to see him as a Revelation 19, Jesus, the resurrected Christ. We see in Revelation 19 verse 11 says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he was riding. It is called faithful and true, trustworthy, loyal. And in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many royal crowns. And he has a name inscribed on him, which no one knows or understand except himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, dressed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on a white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp word with which I may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he will tread the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of kings and Lord of lords. My invitation to you today is to see him like that, the resurrected Christ, Jesus the burning one, Because when we see him like that, the fire that comes from him. Can you feel that fire? He wants to restore you today. I'm going to pray for you. And then I've asked Sarah. and Dean to just lead us into a song where the Lord can just minister to us. It's not about people. It's about what He does. So Father, we thank You for the invitation today to engage with You as a resurrected Christ. Father, I pray that each person here today will receive the fire, the anointing of your presence, of your closeness, of your intimacy. 
Lord, I pray that you will restore them back to love. Father, I pray for every heart that is broken and hopeless today to be restored back to your nature. Father, I pray that as we sing, Father, that you will pour out your glory over each person here today. Father, I see you restoring leaders, leaders that's been tired, leaders who struggled through COVID, just restoring them, that can overflow. I see your overflow as you come, Lord. I see you come, come, come. I see your angels come, and I see you bring this restoration here today. So, Father, we make this space available for you now. We make it available. Jesus, come. Jesus, come. Burning one comes, King of kings, Lord of lords, come. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, we sang that we're going to sing. I've asked Dean to sing this over you. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a different song. This song is the words of the Father to you. And Dean, Dean's got an amazing gift to hear the Lord, but especially he carries the heart of the Father as part of the way that God has made him. And my prayer for you. This morning, just as, as we sing this over you, the words will be up, so if you want to sing it as well, you can. But as we sing this over you, our prayer for you is that you would know that you are loved. That Holy Spirit, as it says in Romans 8, that he would testify with your spirit. Abba, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Dean, the son of yours, Lord. Thank you for what he carries. Thank you for what you've seeded into his life. Thank you for who he is. Thank you for the way he blesses so many. And right now we just pray for a strong sense of your father's favor upon him. And that he would be released to bring what you've put within him today. We just declare the Father's love of you, His acceptance of you, His affirmation of you. We declare His goodness of you today, Dean. Jesus' name.
times when you're up in times when you're down I'm never too far just look around and you'll find me I'm by your side Father saying that. I'm gonna sing that again. No matter. So no matter what comes or goes, one thing that you must know. goodness, your faithfulness and your love towards us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you're not afraid of our story and you meet us in our story right where, right where we are in all of this room today. It's 
not about principles and dog, doctrines and dogmas. It's about encounter with you. All over this room, you, you're doing a, a fresh work of intimacy, drawing unto yourself, opening our hearts to receive from you. May we know your goodness and may we, may we soak in your love, Lord. Thank you for this reminder today that that's what it's about. Being caught up by this divine romance you, you love on us. And the word of the Lord to us today is for too long and too much of our time, of our lives, we live with a fear that comes because we forget that we are loved. And today he reminds us that we are loved. And it brings restoration. And we don't only pray this for our souls, Lord, we pray that the society in which we live would come to know a greater revelation of the God who says, I am Emmanuel with you. And I want to presence myself and my goodness and the faithfulness of my love for you. So we come against all the effects of isolation and separation and anxiety. We break that today. And thank you, Lord, that your spirit sheds abroad your love in our hearts. That's what you do. And you're doing that today. Thank you, Lord, right across this room. So we, we bless what you're doing. We receive what you're doing today, Lord. All of it, all of it. If you want to just take some more time, I don't want to rush this thing. If you want to take some time just to soak in the Lord, you might want to leave your seat or stay where you are, but you're welcome to come and use some carpet space here in the front. And Dean and Sarah can just continue playing. Others who want to go and enjoy some fellowship, you can do that, uh, some coffee. But let's just be mindful of those that just want some unhindered time of soaking in His presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So you're welcome to come. And if you've come and you want someone to pray with you today, you just feel like, I just need someone to pray with me. Why don't you just come and be around the front area as well and ask some of you just to be led of the Spirit, some of the leaders in particular. And come and pray for those that, that are just waiting on the Lord in the front as well. Huh? Let's take some time just to do that. So you're welcome to come up. We're going to have some fellowship over tea and coffee as well. And tonight we gather again at 6.30 for an evening of worship, word ministry, fellowship together. God bless you all. Thank you for coming today. God bless you. And thank you for those listening at home as well. May God bless you and pour out His love upon you wherever you are today.